Dr. DeAngelis has helped shape the conversation of academic medicine, of education, for many decades. And it's my great pleasure to introduce a colleague and friend, Dr. Catherine DeAngelis. To me, the health team is what makes uh, the whole field of health professions what it is. And I, it's so exciting to me to see this kind of uh, display of the health professionals being together and working together. So while I say the characteristics of the medical profession, this is true to some degree for all seven of the health professional schools here. And I'm sure my colleagues uh, will, will uh, discuss that from their perspective. But th this is my characteristic, how I think uh, any of the health professional professions are. We have a special knowledge and special skills. And because of that, that gives us an authority with rewards. Along with this authority and awards comes a great responsibility uh, and for us to have high standards. Um, and along with that, you get to the self-regulation. That means we have a responsibility to regulate ourselves unless we want some government agency or some outside force to regulate us. And I'll get into that a little bit more later. But this whole thing, the whole profession, and all the health professions are held together by this single important word, trust. We have to trust each other, and patients have to trust us. And we should never do anything to compromise that trust. That is the basis of professionalism. What about authority? Others, patients, seek the help primarily or ultimately from members. And one thing I think is important that you say, well, who's, who's the team leader? Well, it depends on the situation. In many cases, it's the physician. In other cases, it's the dentist. In other cases, it's the nurse. It could be the physical therapist, the social worker. It can be any of the health professionals. So I don't think this team captain makes much, sen much sense unless you know what the clinical situation is. Responsibility. Protection of patients. Always, always protect our patients. Self-care. We have to remain healthy, mentally and physically. We have ethical and cordial behavior with patients and colleagues. And we should use our authoritative power to oversee our own members. How many of you in this audience have observed a member of the health professions behaving in an unprofessional way? Now, what's happening, unfortunately, is we have a tremendous interference from business interest. I'm afraid that my profession of medicine is become, it's gone from, and it is going from being a vocation to a business. And we see it so often, and it is very disturbing because there's been so many conflicts of interest. Our professions have allowed business and legal people to take over our profession. And it's time to take it back. And what you people are doing in this room right now is part of the answer. I truly believe that. Because working together, we can, we can make some of these changes. And Sir William Osler, who was probably one of the greatest uh, physicians that ever lived, he said the good physician or healthcare professional will treat the disease, but the great healthcare professional will treat the patient. 